Hey everybody, so in this video I want to look at finding the determinant of a 4x4 matrix. And this is going to be a quote-unquote quick example because even the quick ones are kind of long. So let's look at finding the determinant of a 4x4 matrix. The idea is what we're going to do is we're going to break it up into finding a bunch of 3x3 determinants and that's going to help us find our solution. So we've got our matrix that we want to find the determinant of. I've got the entries labeled a little more generically. And then I have these cofactor signs off to the side, and you'll see where we use those. So a formula to compute the determinant of that matrix is right here. So you may ask, where on earth does that come from, given our matrix A? Well, let's look at that real quick. So the idea is we're going to either expand along a row or a column is what we call it. And I'm going to expand simply along this first column in this example just to get us going. So the idea is let's look at those numbers. A sub 1, 1, A sub 2, 1, A sub 3, 1, A sub 4, 1. Notice those are the values. Those are the coefficients in front of each of these uh, 3 by 3 determinants. A1, A2, 1, A3, 1, A4, 1. Now let's look at those, those cofactor signs. We've got a plus, minus, plus, minus going down that column. And that's going to be the signs we use. Notice we've got a plus, and then we stick a minus here, we stick a plus here, we stick a minus here. So that's how we account for those positives and negatives, those cofactor signs. That's where they get used. Okay, so, so far so good. The, uh, the only thing that we don't have now is where are, you know, these entries coming from in each one of these, these three by three determinants. Well, the idea is, look at its coefficient. So for example, let's look at the a sub 1, 1. Let's look at the, the column it's in, and let's also look at the row that it's in. And we're going to cross out all of those entries. And we're going to look at the values that we have left over. So notice the values that I have left over would be these values that I have shaded in, but those are exactly the values that go in this 3x3 three three determinant. And I'll do one more because the procedure is the same for the rest of them. So let's look at our a sub 2, 1. Well, there's our a sub 2, 1. Again, we cancel out the column and the row, and let's look at the values that are left over. So there's that top row, and then we have these this little bottom chunk of numbers left over, which corresponds to that set of numbers. So you just cross out the row and column that that entry is in. All the numbers that are left over, that's what makes up your smaller determinant. And we could do the same thing to find these values and these values. So for example, to find the a sub 3, 1, we would cross out here. And then to find the 3 by 3 determinant that goes with the a sub 4, 1, we would cross out here and here. And again, we would be left with those values. Okay, so let's do that with our specific example. I already have it filled in. So notice we've got 2, 0, 1, 7. There's my 2, there's my 0, there's my 1, there's my 7. There's my plus, minus, plus, minus. And again, maybe we'll just look at this uh, first determinant. So if I cross out, there's my 2. If I cross out that column and that row, notice again I'm simply left with those values. And we can fill in those other 3 by 3 determinants the same way. So notice now we went from finding the determinant of a 4 by 4 matrix, that's what we're really interested in. Well our formula breaks it down into finding a bunch of 3 by 3 determinants instead. So now we've got 1, 2, 3, four smaller determinants to figure out. And at this point, well, now we're back to computing the determinant of a three by three matrix. Hopefully you recall that. If not, I'll show you one example. So we'll just work on this first one. Let's figure out the value, uh, that determinant. So you may recall the shortcut to do these. What we do is we take the first two columns and we just copy those off to the side. So that's all I've done. And then what we do is we start at the top left entry. I go down and to the right, and I multiply those respective numbers. So negative 5 times 2 times 3, that's going to give me negative 30. 
And then I do it again. 1 times negative 6 times 4, that's negative 24. 4 times 0 times negative 1, that is 0. Now what I do is I then add all of those numbers together. Not done yet because now I start at the bottom left and I go up and to the right. So 4 times 2 times 4 is 32. Negative 1 times negative 6 times negative 5 is 30. And 3 times 0 times 1 is 0. And again, I add those values together, and then I take the difference. So you can check my arithmetic. I got this to be equal to negative 56. So this first determinant, I got this to be equal to negative 56. I haven't accounted for the 2 yet. We still have to, we'll have to multiply by 2 at the end, so let's be careful about that. So let's look at our other determinants. We still have to compute 2, 3, and 4. You can check um, my arithmetic here on these. So that should be 2, 3, and 4. That looks okay. Same idea. So there we would just do this trick, multiplying. There's my values um, for my second. To help me determine that second determinant, I'm just doing this multiplication trick. And I got that second determinant to be equal to 56. Now again, notice in this case, we are multiplying by zero, so it's gonna end up being zero no matter what. On a quiz or a test, I certainly wouldn't have bothered to even figure this out, but just for completeness' sake. You can go through the same trick. You can check, um, so here is my third determinant. Uh, feel free to pause, check my arithmetic. I got that to be equal to negative 84. Again, just doing this multiplication trick, you know, down and up. I'm just using the same colors this time, and the same thing for the last one, figuring out that last determinant. To me, the hard thing about these is just all the computations. If you have to do these by hand, there's so many computations. So be careful, because it would be super easy to make a mistake. Okay, so now we're in business. We just fill in the formula. So again, really the hard work was computing all of these determinants, these smaller three by three determinants, but that's what we just did. Again, I did the first one and I showed the other uh, a little bit faster. You can check my arithmetic. I got this to be equal to negative 588 at the, um, at the end of the day. So that's the value of our determinant. And you would do the same thing if you had a five by five matrix, you would break it up into a bunch of four by four, or excuse me, if you wanted a five by five determinant, you would turn it into a bunch of four by fours, which would then break down into a bunch of three by threes, et cetera. Um, one other thing I do want to touch on again, um, we did expand along this first column. You don't have to do that at all. You can expand along any row or any column that you wish. And a lot of times that'll be clever. It'll, it'll help you um, figure out solutions. So for example, we could have expanded along a column and we would have done a very similar procedure. Just coefficients, we would have used this corresponding uh, cofactor sign chart. So I'll follow up with this video and do some of those in another video. And I'll show how, in certain cases, we can be a little clever to uh, speed up our arithmetic. The good thing is you get the same determinant no matter what. But of course, on a quiz or a test, it's good to be fast. And, you know, to me, the fewer computations I have to make, the more likely I am to get it correct. So, okay, I hope this video on an example of finding the determinant of a 4x4 matrix was useful. As always, feel free to post comments and questions. Please subscribe, thumbs up, comment, share, all that good stuff. All right, good luck, my friend.